Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ta'ala. Welcome to the viewers of Samzam and Tumur. Beloved viewers, today is subhanAllah the 18th of the month of Ramadan, very close to the time of Iftar, and that's why we're on Zamzam and Tumur, corresponding with the Gregorian calendar date of the 1st of May 2021. 1st of May in South Africa and in many other parts of the world heralds a day that's generally commemorated as Workers' Day. SubhanAllah, much from the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we learn with regards to uh, the manner in which we deal with those who are in our employ. And for me particularly, I see all of that encapsulated in one English phrase that says, employees work with us and not for us. I'm joined right now at the beginning of the show by none other than Mawlana Muhammad Vanka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Mawlana. Assalamu alaikum to the esteemed viewers of ITV. Well, uh, Malala, subhanAllah, it seems like uh, Malala today has barred us from being able to see Malala. So just check the settings on your camera and click that button so the viewers can see Malala's Mubarak face once again. Alhamdulillah. So Malala, as introduced the topic today, workers work or employees work with us and not for us. Loads from the Sunnah and the Seerah, subhanAllah, that speak about this. Malala, your thoughts? Yes, absolutely. You know, Molana, when we look at the importance of taking care of workers or those under our employment, when we go in, the, when we start rewinding Islamic history in the time of slavery, in the time of uh, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the respect that Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, you know, had afforded those who were slaves. And of course, Islam did not encourage slavery. Nabi Ali sallam encouraged the Sahaba to free the slaves but how they were treated at that time. And in fact, just one hadith, you know, which perhaps uh, you and I could reflect and ponder over. Nabi Ali Salam said that when your slave, when your servant, uh, you know, prepares that platter of food for many of us, we have them working in our homes, they lay the table, some of them prepare the meals for us. Nabi Ali Salam said, allow them to sit on the same table as you and partake of that meal. However, if you find it below your dignity, you know, to allow them to sit on the same table as you, then fal you now will who look matan or look matain. Then prepare, prepare a platter of food from that which you eat. Let them eat from that which you eat. I mean, how many of us honestly do that? You know, you I always say this, you know, you go and you buy a certain type of bread, you know, for you and uh, your family and you buy inferior quality loaf of bread or milk for, you know, for the domestic or you buy a handbag that's 10, 20,000 rands and you come home and you boast about it. These are human beings end of the day. You know, how do we treat them? How do we speak to them? Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you should forgive them over and over and over again. You know, these are human beings. They come a little late. I mentioned it earlier on one of the other radio stations. You know, we normally when we speak about sadaqa and charity, we always think it's only about giving money. Nabi Ali Salam said that, no, no, that's not only sadaqa. Sadaqa is lessen the burden of those that are working for you. But of course, pay them a good wage. You know, we are inundated in Ramadan. You know, many people ask the question that, Molana, can I give my, my worker in my business or can I pay the domestic zakat? They are Muslim. My question is, why are you paying them a meager wage that they need to collect zakat and live on? I mean, we need to be honest with ourselves. Allah has given us so much. Pay them a livable wage. But like I mentioned as well, is that the blessed month of Ramadan, the day of Eid is coming. It's a joyous occasion, a happy occasion, uh, you know, for us and our families. Make it a happy occasion for them. Uh, you know, give them a little extra. When they open that envelope, they will find perhaps maybe 500 rands extra. For you and I, it will make no difference to our lives but it would bring a smile to their faces. It would make them so happy. And I promise you, respected viewers, the du'as that will come out from the hearts will travel with your generations. So this is something important, the day of Eid. Give them off from work. Uh, you know, let them take the day off. Let it be a happy occasion. Give them a little extra, something extra, you know, for them and their families. They've got little kids. Buy some toys, buy some candy, some sweets. Give it to the domestic and let her enjoy. Let her have a happy day show them the beauty of Islam. Unfortunately, today, when we speak about Islam, many of us think we confine Islam only to rituals. You know, sadaqa, uh, rather salah, fasting in Ramadan, going on hajj, etc. But there's a deeper meaning to, to our religion. And that is, you know, to being good. What did Nabi Ali Salam say as he was leaving this world? 
as-sala as-sala wa ma malakat aymanukum the fear allah with regards to the performance of your salah and fear allah with regards to your subordinates those who are under your care you know let us show them the beauty of islam let us show them the beauty of this beautiful deen i mean the month of ramadan is an ideal opportunity for us you know to display islam to them i mean many a time you'll find many people that we have spoken to uh, you know they had seen you know these noble traits they had seen our akhlaq and our character you know mulana yunus patel rahmatullahi alayhi i just thought i'll make mention of it any person every person who came under his employment every one of them they accepted islam what was it it was the character i mean pay them a good wage uh, you know treat them correctly they are human beings so many a times you know she's ironing the garment and she burns it we cut her salary the person comes to work and she says you know what i need to leave it leave a little early i need to take my child to the doctor there's the door you don't want the job there are 10 other people who are lined up you know to take the job that's not the quality of a muslim that's not the quality of a believer you know we need to show them respect you know how do our little kids speak to those domestics you know how do they speak to those that are working for us in our businesses show them that respect you know they come from far many of them travel kilometers they take two three taxis just to come to work i mean do do, do we ever inquire from them about their well being how many kids they have uh you know which school do they go to i mean let us take it upon ourselves pay the children school fees uh, you know she's paying give her a little extra I mean give them a livable wage you go to a restaurant and you spend thousands of francs we think nothing of it what we spend on one meal that is the salary for the entire month so these are islam has a deeper meaning it's not only about ibadah but it's serving humanity this is a fundamental ingredient of our iman and this is a important component of our faith charity starts at home charity starts at home those that are working for us so this is something that we need to seriously reflect and ponder over what have we done you know to improve the lives of those that are working for us jazakumullah khairan to barana subhanallah let's keep that thought on our mind not only today because workers day is being commemorated but every other day and more so when it comes to the end of every particular month or whatever you know the payment cycle may be whether it's someone who's earning a weekly wage or a monthly salary but to keep this in our mind that this is uh, in a sense allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aiding us by having shared these people who help us in our mehna in our effort towards being able to celebrate uh, the bounties of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth we say jazakumullah khairan to maulana and beloved viewers we say to you that don't go anywhere because we'll be back after the short break Welcome back beloved viewers if you've just tuned in you're tuned in to Zamzam and Tumur with myself Abdurrahman Leili and subhanallah today today I am honored beyond measure so when I originally subhanallah started out presenting on television particularly in ITV one of the first people who gave me that inspiration and motivation to be able to continue was none other than my in studio guest today and that is the national director of islamic da'wah movement of south africa dr ibrahim dara it gives me great pleasure to welcome dr ibrahim to zamzam and tumur this evening assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa alaikum salam maulana and to our viewers yeah. dr subhanallah we chatted maybe some 5 6 years ago previously uh, with regards to idm uh, naturally there's there's, there's many da'wah organizations throughout the world that are doing sterling work for the benefit of our viewers in particular and me subhanallah as well just to refresh us in terms of how long has idm been in existence and what's idm's core thrust within the wide array of dawa right if i drift a bit uh, cut me short bismillahir rahmanir rahim yes idm started in 1977 so we are now 44 years old alhamdulillah we thank allah for that and it started not any with any grand ideas just to help a very very poor impoverished community in Madden Hill that I came across as I was treating some patients there I was in private practice there and and there were dozens of naked children african naked suddenly one of they all responded to someone said wa alaikum salam and I said oh they all muslim I'm asking my host who was a hindu and he says yes there are a lot of muslim staying and a lot of others all poor people and that's when things began working in my mind and I got some of my patients Uh, who were like minded we had uh, quranic classes taking place at that time weekly at my house 
And, uh, and we started to do something practical, and that's the birth of idea. But from then till now, alhamdulillah, with the kudut of Allah, we have made great strides. And, uh, and eventually our name became known as Islamic Dawah Movement of Southern Africa. Just for those few people who may not know Dawah, as we know, you give Dawah to someone for tea, for meal. So it means to invite. And at Dawah, the definitive meaning is to invite people to the path of the one true God. And, and, and that is why a lot of people are a little bit confused about the meaning. That's the meaning of so Islamic Dawah movement, people who invite others to the path of the one true God. And this is our primary function and objectives. So it's a Dawah. However, you, it cannot live in a vacuum. There must be a context. So with it, there must be education. And that's why we have education, skills development, capacity building. And then there must be research. And, uh, and publication, this is where the Quran comes in, the translation and the printing. And finally, I use, in this order, we have welfare. And I should just make this clear, that whilst we are so happy with our Muslims feeding all over and everywhere, which is one of the fundamental things, and it's so such strong hadiths about it, but we must go a little beyond the physical feeding. We must feed people spiritually and educationally. And, and, and that is why, I and my colleagues felt we should concentrate on that, on some of the other activities, other than just welfare and feeding. So this is how IDM started. Hmm. MashaAllah. So Dr. Subhanallah, as you mentioned, I mean, this, this welfare, which is call it the third of the, of, the, of the silos. The middle one really intrigues me when we speak about research and publications, uh, noting that many a times uh, in you know, various dimensions of, of, of serving the deen, organizational Islam, uh, people would be using the same materials year on year. Sometimes it's a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, you know, uh, and, and, and things are not done scientifically. So there's no gathering of information, of evidence, of community scanning, of community mapping, etc., etc. And neither is, as I mentioned or referenced or alluded to, this idea of continuously enhancing the materials. Because naturally, uh, a material that someone gets, whether they're reading it, whether it's an audio file, whether it's an audio video file, is their first impression with regards to Islam. So share with us a little bit around this element of, of research and publications and you know, why it's important in terms of to IDM uh, of Southern Africa and what are the benefits and the consequences of having this as one of the d defined silos within IDM. Yeah. Primarily, we started a lot of leaflets and booklets and books. And in fact, we came out with a very famous uh, leaflet on Malcolm X many years ago, Muhammad Ali. We had professional writers writing this up, even though it was just a leaflet, because you have to pitch well and you have to be accurate and correct. And we have distributed possibly hundreds of thousands of these in the townships, because our brothers from the township are happy to identify with a person like Malcolm X or Muhammad Ali, and, and they feel you know, one, you know, that Islam is not a stranger to them. But that was one. We have published a lot of books, good books. Now, I cannot enumerate them now because it will take time. However, the biggest thrust in our research is, alhamdulillah, we have translated the Quran in six languages, official languages. That includes Afrikaans, Zulu, Kosa, Sotho, Portuguese for Mozambique and Angola. And it's the sixth largest language in the world. And Chichewe, which is a major language in four Southern African countries. Now, some of the translators took many, many years. The Portuguese translators took over 10 years and, and highly qualified. And it cost us millions, uh, thousands of rounds to, to translate the cost of the fees and all that. And then to print them and make it available en masse. Mm -hmm. Because this, a book like this will cost about 300, 400 rounds in the bookshop. Sure. Our people can't afford it. Mm -hmm. So with the sponsors of ITV and many others, we were able to give it out free. And we distributed over 120,000 Qurans in Allah. all the languages. But it's just a drop in the ocean. I'll give you an example. When we printed the Portuguese Quran and we printed 13,000 with such effort, the cost. 
And within weeks, it was gone. And this is not distributing on the street, street corners sure. or anything. People who need Targeted it who want populations. to eat. Because mm. now the understanding of Islam is there. People want to understand. The resurgence is there. People who are thirsty now. What is this? Because in the past, we just took it for granted what our parents taught us and our forefathers. Now people want to read it and read it in the language of the, uh, you know, read the Quran, read the sources of Islam in, in the, the language, language that they understand. understand. So now they're not just doing things uh, rudely, like, you know, but understanding what they're doing and why they're doing it. So, Dr. Subhanallah, this evening, uh, viewers of ITV and the broader community has an opportunity to, to get further exposure to much of the activities of IDM. Would you like to tell the viewership about what they can look forward to this evening? Well, we hope to really publicize the Quran and impress upon the viewers that we need to print many thousands of Qurans in Afrikaans, Zulu, Koza, Sutu, Chichewe, and Portuguese. By the way, we are working on three other languages, official Southern Shalom. African languages. And many, some of these were for the first time in history. So whereas some of the scriptures were translated in the local languages nearly 100 years ago, in Islam, we only translate the Quran in the last few years, wow. which is a sad reflection, but Allah knows best, and we are now moving. So we're hoping, it cost us 100 rounds to print the Quran. We're hoping that we could uh, get sponsors for thousands, tens of thousands of Quran uh, that we, in all the six languages because we are running low. However, IDM has built over 200 boreholes and water wells. A water well costs 14,000 rand, a borehole costs 42,000 rand. We need as many as we can because we are doing this in Malawi where the need is for hundreds, if not much more, of water wells and boreholes. And we also build mosques in South Africa, in Malawi, and the smallest, cheapest mosque, but brick and mortar, is uh, 220,000 rand. In South Africa, is a bit, bit, bit more. So these are the things, as well as education, because at the grassroots level, in the townships, we've got quite a few sewing classes, computers, uh, gardening, crash, uh, sisters classes, even karate in one place, home-based care, and things like that. We want to build people's confidence, ability, for them to make some money if need be, but above all, the confidence and the dignity. So it cost us for the teachers and for all the other uh, aspects of this thing. Mm. So we want for the education, especially for the Quran, for the boreholes, and for the masjids. But being the month of Ramadan and feeding, if people want to give us for iftar time, feed the fasting, we are, for many years, we have been feeding tens of thousands of meals in the township masjids that we are running, over 30 of them. SubhanAllah. So, beloved viewers, you can look forward to, inshallah, hearing more, seeing more that IDM are doing in the field. I'm sure they've got lots of footage that they'll share with you. That's in this evening's pledge. For myself and Dr. Ibrahim, uh, we say Jazakumullah khairan to you. Beloved viewers, I'll be back after this break. Welcome back, beloved viewers. SubhanAllah, we chatted to Dr. Ibrahim Dada before that break about IDM. We have another segment coming up a little bit later in the show, inshallah, where we chat to someone else. Uh, or, or should I should I let the cat out of the bag? Maybe I should do that, subhanAllah. So I'm joined in studio now by not a guest, but in actual fact, the host of Samzam and Tumur. And I hope, inshallah, they're going to introduce you to the very loving, lovely, lovable brother, Abdul Manak, who is in studio with me, inshallah. Uh, and naturally, sometime during this period of Zamzam and Tumur, we're also joined by Sister Zahira Baam Ismail. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, subhanAllah, Sister Zahira, I can see you really commemorating Workers' Day in the sense of, you know, it's <laughs> tools down for you today. Um, you happen to be in a different location. So as they say, you know, names and places will be, uh, will be withheld to protect the identity of the innocent. So we won't say exactly <laughs> where you are and who you're with. Today, subhanAllah, we, as, as a nation and as people in many other countries as well, we commemorate Workers' Day. Um, for me particularly, I sum this up as those people in our employ work with us and not for us. 
uh, you know, not wanting to make this a male-female divide, I thought, subhanAllah, we could engage a little bit around number one, the responsibility as those people who are employees. And then, subhanAllah, look at certain instances of how we, who Allah has granted us a little bit of extra fortune, also need to be more cognizant and wary as employers. Your thoughts? What a wonderful day, and you're absolutely right, Sheikh. I have taken a little bit of time out, and may Allah bless my host for this evening. Alhamdulillah. Um, but I think there's two parts to this on the employers and the employees. The first thing is, you know, there's always dignity in hard work. And there's, from an Islamic perspective, there's a lot to be said for having a very strong work ethic, to be committed, to understand what our obligations are, whether somebody is watching us or not watching us, to understand what we have to do if we have signed up to a contract to be able to do that. And I think it's very important for us to understand that if we have committed to something, it's, for example, if you are a teacher and you're teaching in a classroom environment, to be sitting on your cell phone, you have to consciously ask yourself, is this correct or is this not correct? What are you doing with your time? What have you been? What is your job description? And I think it's very important, uh, many of us are in work positions, that we are honorable in it. And the one thing that I've always learned from my late dad is that there's a lot of dignity in hard work. And it's not something that we should ever be shy of or something that we should ever be embarrassed about. Alhamdulillah for the many people who are able to go out to work and to be able to provide for their families. I'm just subhanAllah. On the going other to, side. I'm going to interject G here very quickly, Sister Zahira. So the viewers in Durban do note that the time of iftar has set in, in Durban. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your iftar of this 18th fast. Allahu Akbar. Just two days remaining before we into the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Sister Zahira, then back to you, subhanAllah. We had spoken a little bit about the responsibility as employees and naturally the other side of the coin, those who Allah has granted the good fortune of being employers. So with this great blessing, obviously comes a massive responsibility. And that's something that we can never shy away from. And I think that's the thing uh, with everything in life. The greater the blessing, the more responsibility. The better you know, the more you are expected to do better as well. And I think this is where the greatest responsibility lies on the side of the employer. Because I think we will, as employers, will be far more answerable in terms of how we deal with the staff members around us, the kind of dignity we give to them, the respect, the kindness. It's not just uh, a modern day slavery, uh, which is what we often do see around us. And I think it's something we have to be so conscious of because understand and how answerable we will be for it. I know that for many, many years uh, growing up, we would often hear uh, people around us in our family saying, make sure they are paid before the, the sweat dries. Make sure that they are paid before anything else happens. Because there was such an Islamic awareness around fulfilling the obligations and the rights of the people who work for us. And this is something that we can never, ever shy away from. And I think we, besides ensuring that people are paid timelessly, it's also dealing with people in a level of dignity and with respect. And I think it's very often, we often hear certain derogatory words in terms being used so casually and we've far surpassed the time where that will ever be okay and I think this is a time now where we need to be far more conscious of how we deal with people and if we understand that these very same people that are in our employ are people who are someone's father someone's child, someone's daughter, someone's mother, and then see how you speak to them. And would you be okay if somebody spoke to you or any of your family members in that manner? And I think exactly as you said at the beginning, Chef, these are not people that work for us. These are people that work with us. And if we understand the value of the people who work with us, we will understand that nothing happens without them, whether it's in business or whether it's within our home environment. They are the foundation of everything that works like clockwork, that makes it move. And if we understand this, then we'll understand that we are working with them and not them working for us. SubhanAllah, so why this particular adage or phrase that sums it up sits so well with me is the idea around, you know, when we look at what makes successful teams. And successful teams are those where there's, there's a healthy level of collaboration, uh, there's continuous feedback between team members, and I feel one can only achieve this in a sense of when you in your own mind frame that mm -hmm. these are people who work with me and not for me. Sister Zaira, with the short time remaining, share with us from the many experiences you have had and anecdotes you would know of, of where people have embraced those people in their employ 
uh, and, and you know, they've just had untold success in terms of that personal employee's life development, growth and progress. It's exactly as you summed up, collaboration and communication. This what is what makes it successful. And we've seen it not only at business levels, but we've seen it in homes as well, where people become comfortable understanding that their homes are run by people who love them and who care for their family as much as they do. But there's also a mutual respect between uh, the employer and the employee, which ensures the success and smooth running, whether it's up a home or a business. But I think it's exactly as you summed it up, collaboration and communication. If people are uh, communicating just just to be heard, understand that that's where the beginning of the problem starts. If you're communicating to understand each other and to find common solutions and commonality that will make the success of everything, that's when you find success. And if you, you know, I always say, you don't have to worry about looking after your customers. If you look after your employees, your employees will look after your customers. And that's where you find success. Well, subhanAllah, I'm definitely going to take business leadership and management 101 with Sister Zahira, <laughs> but that will be sometime after Zamzam and Timur. Sister Zahira, we, we bid you farewell, noting that we're stealing from your host time uh, this mm -hmm. evening. Inshallah, we hope that you and your host will remember uh, all that plug into Zamzam and Timur at your du'as at the time of iftar. Um, we Inshallah, shukran so much for, for having me on air, and I look forward to seeing all the viewers later this evening on the IDM pledge line. Jazakumullah khairan. So, subhanAllah, more of Sister Zahira later this evening. Beloved viewers, a quick break. And then, as I mentioned, the real host of Zamzam and Tumur is in studio with us. Welcome back. Beloved viewers, so subhanAllah, I'm sure you've been mulling over all the different presenters of Samzam and Tumur from the inception of the show. It gives me great pleasure to, subhanAllah, welcome to the set, brother Abdul Malak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahran. Uh, marhaba. Welcome to, you know, to be part of Jazakallah for, for allowing me to be part of the program. I'm so excited. And alhamdulillah, you know, it's such a spiritual time. With people at home, the ladies are making nice samosas, the husbands are helping them. And, uh, you know, at home, in, in Cape Town, they're making nicely the co-sisters, they're having the buba. So, alhamdulillah, beautiful time where also, you know, people are connected this time. They connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where duas are accepted. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're making a dua this moment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua. Amen, inshallah, amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you, you know, whatever you wish for, give you that and in abundance, inshallah, especially at the spiritual time. Amen, ya Rab. So, Brother Abdul, you wear many hats, but I mean, I'm the one wearing the hat. <laughs> um, you wear many hats, subhanAllah, you move around amongst many different people, you see different initiatives at a corporate level, uh, you know, at a youth development level, at an empowerment level, etc. And this evening in particular, you, you, you're plugging in and, and giving off selflessly of your time and your energies by sharing with us the experiences you've had in terms of one of your pet loves and pursuits being uh, da'wah. So tell us a little bit about what draws you particularly, particularly to the activities of Islamic Da'wah movement of Southern Africa. You know, every morning we wake up, we wake up with a choice. And what is that choice? The choice we make can define us, can make a difference. And that is the choice, is to serve, to serve unconditionally. And inshallah, every morning I wake up and say, Allah, I'm not sure where you're going to take me today, but just I'm grateful to have another day. And on that particular day, Ya Allah, take me. There's so many people out there, Ya Allah, you use as your servants. You use to make an impact. You use to make a difference. Ya Allah, there's some that you take, you know, there's a dog on the road, that they, they take the dog off the road. Some that are, you know, feed, um, feed animals. Others water the trees. And so much, and others feed people. There's so much activities that people are involved. So Ya Allah, I'm not sure, but Ya Allah, I'm making myself available. Ya Allah, use me and take me. And inshallah, if the call comes where we can serve, where we can contribute, where we can make a difference, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us. Amen, amen. You know, the day that Allah don't use us, the day that uh, no one calls us to make a difference, to make an impact, it's our, it's our concern, it's our worry. So we ask Allah, Ya Allah, firstly, to grant us sincerity, to grant us ikhlas, to allow us to, to, to engage and make a difference. And alhamdulillah, tonight the hat I wear is the IDM hat. You know, it's, uh, it's an organization where I'm an ambassador of, and alhamdulillah, for over 43 years, it's been very involved, and that's why I've decided to become an ambassador of this, because they've done, they've built over 70 masjids, alhamdulillah. And you know, those masjids are, are places which is a hub, 
where people can interact, empower, upskill, educate each other, and not only in, in the townships, all over um, Southern Africa. Also, you know, this, the cause is, is, is a varied cause. There's so much good in it. They also have, you know, a lot of people want to, last year at this time, as you're aware, we were at COVID. We, you know, we had so many losses. So many people that, that, that are close to us, near to us, we lost. You know, they wake, we wake up in the morning and they have, uh, there's a flu and suddenly they have to go to the doctor. Suddenly they're in hospital. Suddenly we don't see them. The next minute there's a hearse outside and there's the body. You know, so the boreholes is one cause which people can interact with. You know, tonight with the Islamic Dawah movement, you can, there's a pledge line. And inshallah, that's where I am today. And that's the hat I'm wearing, is to, is to be involved in that pledge line. So tonight there's a golden opportunity, my viewers, if you are listening, to interact with us, to engage with us. So many people here want to spiritually draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spiritually connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spiritually make a difference. Here's an opportunity where, alhamdulillah, some of the projects, not only the borehole projects where you can give sawabi jariya, you know, which is close to my heart is the Qurans, where there's six different translations, alhamdulillah, of the Qurans, which alhamdulillah, you can be part of the word of Allah. How beautiful is that there? Where, alhamdulillah, you know, imagine that someone from a different language, either, either Kosa, Sutu, is reading the Quran, and they're going through a tough time. They're going through a difficult period, and they come across the verse, you know, after every difficulty, there is ease. And inshallah, when they read that in their language, they suddenly have belief, they have faith. And this is the word of Allah, just like we fell in love with the author. Here's an opportunity where you can inspire others to fall in love with the water. So I appeal to you, inshallah, join us tonight. Interact with us tonight. From 8 o'clock tonight, alhamdulillah, as you had, Zaira Bam will be on, Idris Kamisa will be on, you know, Doctor will be on, and uh, Yusuf Dinda. So all of us will be on, and inshallah, we will just be, you know, um, interacting with you, engaging with you, answering your questions, and inshallah, there is the hat I'll be wearing, where we can, you know, inspire others to, to inshallah, share in the goodness um, be part of the process, inshallah. So, subhanAllah, I, I see the connection uh, bright and clear for me now in the sense of you passionate about development, uh, upskilling, etc. And when that, as one of the silos that Islamic Da'wah movement of Southern Africa focuses on, is married together with bringing people and connecting people with Allah, then literally you have a house on fire. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure that's, that's a big part of what has drawn you towards saying this is an organization, an institution that I want to take on uh, as my own and become a part of and contribute to. Absolutely. And you know what makes it so unique? It's not just um, the Qurans. Not only that we talked about Sawabe Jaria with the bowls. They also have activities where there's women empowerment, where there's causes for sewing causes, there's technology causes, there's computer causes, and alhamdulillah, there's over 35 classes. And these classes where, kid, where women are uplifted, you know, we always talk of empowering the youth, but the youth need a mother, a mother that's educated. Here's an opportunity where people can get involved and empower the woman, with just, just as close as, uh, as little as 2,000 rands for a month, inshallah, they can educate uh, a lady, empower her to become a leader. And you know, we want, to, we want to make a difference. And also, you know, the other projects that we do is, you know, the creches, young little kids, um, feeding schemes that we do. Also, you know, which is close to my heart is sport. I'm passionate about sport. You know, as you're aware, like cricket is, you know, you must watch out for us cricketers. We hit and we run. So as soon as I'm finished <laughs> here, I'm gonna hit and I'm gonna be off away, inshallah, and later on we're gonna be together. They do karate. You know, they, they, the Islamic Dawah would also have karate classes. So I want to ask you a question quickly. Can I ask you a question? Sure, I know you know You know, um, what are the three rules, alhamdulillah, of karate? And if you know those three rules, alhamdulillah, you and inshallah, all the, everyone who's watching can inshallah be safe from all trauma. Inshallah, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you have these three rules, you are safe. What are the three rules? So subhanAllah, beloved viewers, today has been uh, that beautiful day as Brother Abdul mentions when you wake up in the morning and you ask Allah for all the good things. I got some lessons in business leadership and management courtesy of the sister Zahira. And now I Karate hope, lessons. I hope, I hope he's going to remain on his seat. But I'm, I'm willing as a student, you know, with all the discipline and respect of, uh, that you should show towards the teacher, I'm willing to embrace these lessons. So confession. I don't know what are the three basic core fundamental lessons in karate, but subhanAllah, Brother Abdul, now in the maqam and stature of my teacher, is going to instruct me. Inshallah, I feel inspired just to instruct you. So there's three simple rules, and you know the viewers out there who are watching, Inshallah, they can also do that. So whenever you are attacked, whenever you're in danger, 
And if you use these three rules, you are say, firstly, you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you look left, you look right, and you run for your life. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> that is the best karate rules you can ever have, inshallah. In that way, you are safe, you are all good. Inshallah, well, does that help? Inshallah, does that, uh, you know, you, you don't need a black belt for this. You don't need a, this is just simple uh, uh, Abdul Manak teaching, inshallah. I, I think that's got <laughs> something to do with the element of the love for cricket. Because just now he said hit and run. Now he's saying look left, look right. And just run. run for your life, alhamdulillah. And alhamdulillah, you know, with regard to cricket and sport, you know, people want to get involved. People want to be active. People want to do good. And today, inshallah, and I appeal back to going back to the IDM. Inshallah, tonight I appeal to you, join us at 8.30. Inshallah, you know, we've got a host of people coming. You're going to, inshallah, we're going to interact with you. We're going to make you smile. You know, we've got Brother Idris Kamisa with beautiful energy also, inshallah. You know, a doctor is there. So, with regard to this, inshallah, we appeal to you to join us. It's going to be something different, inshallah. But you can make a difference. You can contribute. And if you are watching, you know, we appeal to you to interact with us tonight. 8.30, tune in. We're on right till about 12 o'clock. And inshallah, we're going to, inshallah, be your host. Amin ya Rabbul Alam. So subhanAllah, Brother Abdul is with me on set. I'm not fortunate to always write up until the time of iftar have someone with me on set. And uh, we're going to take this opportunity of making dua collectively. So I'm going to say a few phrases and then Brother Abdul is going to say a few phrases. And inshallah we'll do that all the way up until the time of iftar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Al-Aqibatu lil-Muttaqeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashafil anbiya il-Musallin Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Allah most merciful, the one who has granted us the Qur'an as our constitution, granted us the ability to be able to recite the Qur'an, granted us the ability to be able to reflect on the Qur'an. This evening you grant us the opportunity of being able to be the means by which that, that benefit and that ni'mah and bounty is extended to many of the people of our land, the people of our land, Allah most merciful. We ask of you to make that a reality for us, that inshallah you use us as that, utilize us as those tools and those vehicles and those facilitators who will be able to take your word to many more people so that they will celebrate your praises. Oh Allah, O oh Most High, Most Merciful, forgive all our sins. O oh Allah, guide us. O oh Allah, inspire us. O oh Allah, there's so many of your banda, so many of the people out there in our country, in our nation, in the world, Ya Allah, are searching, are yearning, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, have mercy on them, Ya Allah. So many of us and so many of them are making dua at this moment. Ya Allah, accept the dua. Ya Allah, you know what is in their hearts. You know what's touched them. Ya Allah, a lot of them are suffering. A lot of them are going through a tough time. A lot of them are stressed. A lot of them are in pain. A lot of them and are having difficulty. O oh Allah, ease their difficulty. O oh Allah, make it such that, Ya Allah, they are fasting children are fasting ya allah they are inspiring and, and, and showing leadership oh allah inspire them and so that others are inspired the old people inshallah they are frail they are in difficulty and they are they are having tough times inshallah with covid around and fear and we all are weary ya allah take away this uh, this covid and this disease ya allah cleanse our country ya allah purify all of us ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh allah help us ya allah oh allah use us as a tool ya allah use us to touch the hearts of others ya allah so that ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us have sincerity. Let us have ikhlas. Oh Allah, let us be among those who are intentional. Our intention is such that, Ya Allah, you are happy with our intentions, pleased with our intentions. Ya Allah, let us focus, Ya Allah. Let us be focused on you, Ya Allah. Focus on the sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah, most merciful, we ask of you for everything that Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would have sought from you. And we ask of your refuge in all those aspects that Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would have sought refuge Amen. in you from. Allah most merciful, we ask of you to accept this short dua of ours at the time of iftar here in the city of Johannesburg. And we ask of you to accept the supplications of all from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those that they have made in the month of Ramadan, those that inshallah you grant us the tawfiq and the ability to, be, to make in the coming days up until the end of Ramadan. And we ask of you to grant us and maintain all of us with afiyah up until the month of Ramadan and beyond. Oh Allah, that signals then the time of iftar in Johannesburg. We ask of you to accept our fast. Allahumma laka sumtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakaltu wa ala rizqika aftartu fa taqabbal minna. Beloved viewers, subhanAllah, that's the time of iftar here in the city of Johannesburg. Um, do note that the time of iftar will be displayed on your screen for Cape Town. Right now, we cross to the city of Medina al Munawwara for the adhan, the iftar, uh, and then subhanAllah the salah of Maghrib from Masjid al-Nabawi sallallahu ala sahibi for myself, brother Abdul Manak and subhanAllah all those who featured in Zamzam and Tumur throughout the show today up until tomorrow wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh